I'm Salim Nurallah and I'm sitting in Pleasantry Lane, which is uh, my recording studio, which I've had here in one incarnation or another for uh, about 12 years now. It uh, started off as a uh, one-car garage that my brother and I converted with uh, money from our illustrious Budweiser endorsement at the time. And uh, it had a pair of crutches holding up the ceiling, which was uh, very impressive, and a, uh, a little uh, window unit that was supposed to cool the whole thing. And uh, we made a record called the Nerala Brothers in that one room on an eight track recorder. Then we sold the place and had nervous breakdowns mutually in separate uh, states. Uh, a few years later, uh, I realized the error of my ways and I was driving down this street and there was a uh, for sale sign out front and uh, I had an epiphany that it was meant to be that the only way I could continue playing music is to re-buy this place and, uh, and start over again. We moved in again and um, Shortly thereafter, and right before my, my first son Gavin was born, uh, I took the plunge and added a control room on to the, uh, to the one room uh, that used to be the garage. And uh, it was a very small control room with no window and um, was very cramped, but at least it gave me enough isolation, uh, which is isolation is very important in recording because you have to separate the drums, you have to be able to to uh, listen to, to the drums through speakers. You can't be in the same room with them because they're too loud. Death Ray Davies was one of the first bands that came here. And my friend John Dufalo uh, took a chance with me and I, I hopefully uh, uh, it paid off. A few years later, I uh, was about to leave on my third acoustic solo tour of Europe with my family in tow. And we had the old 97s coming in in October of 2007. And um, Rip, who runs the studio with me, took on the huge responsibility of uh, adding this posh, wonderful control room and hallway and bathroom to, uh, to Pleasantry Lane Part 2. So I was gone for a month, and when I got back, we uh, frantically painted and put the finishing touches on it because uh, a week later the old 97s rolled into town and uh, showed up to this beautiful new studio. They'd actually thought that they were going to show up to the not so beautiful cramped boxy studio. So they were really happy uh, to see what we'd done. The design took a long time and it's, it's really cool. You can see it's very sleek. It's got uh, doors with gears and computers in it. You know, you can see it's perfectly designed so the, the screen sits in the right place to be able to, to look through the big window and see whoever jamming out and wave your finger at them and say, no, that was no good or oh, wonderful or jump up and down or throw things at the window, whatever you want to do. Um, and this room was actually designed by Bob Suffolk, who's uh, a great, um, English eccentric, uh, you know, studio designer, and and we very much wanted it to be. Um, I Jamie and I both love '60s mod stuff, and um, we wanted this to be s unique and kind of mod, and so uh, you know everything to the bamboo floor and the way the carpet curves, the. The, the mod couch, brown couch, and the, this is a white Saranen chair that actually, I grew up with that chair because my parents, who were not mod and not into, into modern furniture, accidentally had this amazing classic Saranen set in the, in the kitchen. And then the tracking room, I really like because it's, it's kind of homey and it's, it just feels comfortable and I've got posters of the Beatles and the Damned and, and my daughter in the background. I think it's important to 
to just give it your best shot. Have fun, enjoy working with the people that you're working with, and try to be positive and leave them with something good to remember. A picture of your family when you were only three. A picture of a castle, a picture of a beach. A picture on your birthday.